What you are hearing is the alarming sound of an emergency broadcast through the new CAP or CAP Alert app on your phone. CAP stands for Common Alerting Protocol and is a web-based platform and service that allows authorities to send out a warning instantly to the general public. The Common Alerting Protocol is an international standard messaging format that is designed to disseminate warning messages across a variety of technology for the media. Um, for example, we can send one message and it's able to be interpreted by smartphones, email, text SMS, sirens, radio and TV interrupts. The CAP offers agencies authentication. It provides key designated authorities access to the general public providing authentic information. Prior to the CAP system, you had ABS and the radio stations, they are much more now than then. And so you will send a message to the radio station with the expectation that it will be read. And the challenge we had back then, and certainly one of the challenges sometimes for their own purposes, they will edit the message. So sometimes some of the critical content got lost. We, we try sending messages via the telephone providers and in some cases the messages are queued in the system and so I could get the message within, within a minute of it being sent but somebody else could get it five minutes, ten minutes as the case may be, which is not ideal. The cab allows us to enter a message and it automatically translates it so it has a multilingual function. It also allows us to upload multimedia images, for example a map if we wanted to highlight safe zones in the case of a tsunami evacuation warning, um, even audio recordings if needed to be. So basically the CAP enhances the efficiency of government agencies and it also enhances the time in which persons can respond to a hazard or disaster situation. Good thing about the CAP is that because you can pre-program or pre-prepare the messages, the time it takes to type up a message and get it into the system. All you have to do is maybe change the date, change some keywords, or add some keywords and the message goes out. It means that there's a certain degree of reliability in the message getting to the end users early. The Met Office gives us a heads up. We're going to get a certain amount of rainfall. We know that there are low-lying areas across Antigua based on the details in the message from the Met Office, we can then pull up the, the map with the, the low line areas and we can send a message out early enough so that those persons who live in a low line area will get the message and can react to that message. The Ministry deals with um, ensuring that we're able to communicate and to do what is necessary to protect our uh, vulnerable populations and so it's important that we have an established means by which we can communicate with those communities. Um, I think for the nation it's very much an extension of the same thing as opposed to having different methodologies of sending different messages and not really meeting um, and, and getting to the message across to the vulnerable communities, it's best just to have one identified means of communication. The disaster management cycle is uh, the main, the four main pillars, preparedness, response, recovery and mitigation. Uh, preparedness would be the one where warning is required. And so under the preparedness program, early warning system is required to make sure that the types of information that the general public will need gets to them as specifically as it pertains to warning. Now, the multi-hazard warning system is preferred in disaster management because you can have one system and warn across different hazard platforms. This system allows us to warn the same stakeholders using the same system. CAP really is not just for the Ministry of Social Transformation, but it's really something that can be used across all sectors and especially for our visitors to our island.
it's a time-saving device and it can be utilized in the tourism sector um, to manage our situation. For example, if you have a tsunami warning in a, say a coastline area, the north coast or the south coast, it would assist us um, tremendously because every stakeholder would, would be able to respond almost at the same time. So essentially we're looking forward to working along with NADS to get all the stakeholders involved, all the two operators, all the hoteliers involved in the CAP so that we can have this platform for response. It allows us to send messages that will allow critical agencies that have specific roles and functions under the National Disaster Plan and the disaster management legislation to mobilize and activate their systems for responding to a particular situation. What this does is allow us to send a message to everybody simultaneously um, without having to use more than one staff sending message repeatedly. And so this is, is good and it, it has the potential to significantly enhance our response time depending on the type of hazard. We now have some flexibility in giving access for warning to some critical agencies, Ministry of Health, Met Office, Fire, Defense Force, and so on. We normally get reports of missing persons. We have certain major incidents that happen. And the quicker we can get that type of information, for instance, we have a missing young person. If that information is disseminated quickly, it allows the other officers to respond. I think this would be very useful for us. It's an advancement to the, uh, getting the message across for the police in a very short space of time. And uh, we welcome it. It is a very advanced piece of tool which we hope to have um, circulated among our members for them to buy into, to become part of it, because at the end of the day, it makes our work much easier. The CAP forms an integral part of Antigua and Barbuda's national early warning system. An early warning system consists of four key elements. One, disaster risk knowledge. Are we aware of the hazards and our vulnerabilities? Two, monitoring and forecasting. Do we have agencies to monitor and provide scientific data and analysis of threats? Three, effective and immediate dissemination and communication of warnings. And four, response capacity. Are plans in place to manage disasters? The CAP has proven that it can really assist us in communicating to the masses. It represents an advancement of the way that the ministry, as well as the other ministries, are able to communicate with the general population. I think it's another tool towards us assisting the public at a quicker pace because the fact that you can disseminate that type of emergency information so quickly. In the past, um, without the CAP, you would have to alert persons, alert all our stakeholders, and that would take a long time. So essentially, it is a, 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 a tool or an opportunity that allows us to alert them within seconds. It's a very good idea. I definitely would advise that we maximize on it, although I realize it's going to take time. Technology is advancing quickly. Effective disaster risk management needs to keep up as well. For me as a working mom, the CAP app for me, if an alert comes in like there's a hurricane or a possible tsunami, I will knock it in. There are things I probably need to go and grab before I get my kids and go home and prepare for it. Another benefit of it, the CAP app being on your phone. You don't have to wait for the news in the evening not to turn on a radio or to log on to Facebook. It's right there on your phone, so wherever you are, once your phone is close by, you'll, get, you'll see the alert and then you know what to do after that. NODS plans to expand the cap to include SMS text messages, interrupters for other radio and television stations, and physical sirens. A message from NODS and the partnership between UNDP, SEDEMA, OCHA, IFRC, and funded by European Union Civil Protection and Humanitarian Aid. Prepare Caribbean.